Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Klizmer Rika Fort, and today with me is um, one of my instructors. Uh, we have PE instructor, uh, Sir Dexter Dapitan of the College of Arts and Sciences in Lyceum of the Philippines, Davao. Before we begin, we would like to give a big disclaimer that though I am a student of LPU Davao and I'm talking to an instructor of LPU Davao, uh, our thoughts and opinions are, are our own and they do not constitute any official statement made by the school. Now with that out of the way, I've invited Sir Dexter here today to have a conversation on mental health and academe, specifically Philippine academe. And this will be targeted towards, um, this will be targeted towards undergraduate students because that's where we've seen nowadays where the most pressures have occurred and where most people are now dropping out because of mental health issues. We've actually seen fellow uh, Lyceans and Laurelians drop out of school for a season because of mental health issue. And we would just like to have a conversation about that topic for people to look at and you know help think and feed the discussion. So Sir Dexter, um, good afternoon and welcome to the conversation. Hi, please, good afternoon. So I am very happy that you invited me within the day, no? It's just, I guess this is an on the spot interview. I, I don't have any materials right now. It's just this, the, maybe my, my explanations and all, my sharings will be based on my observations will be based on my experiences and lastly it will be based on some studies that I have searched because I am currently taking my thesis right now in master's so I am almost on the last phase of my journey academic journey as a student you know, continuing student and my topic for uh, my thesis right now is somewhat relevant to our talk today that's why I am also happy that uh, I am one of the invited I don't know, guests for your video. Yes, uh, Sir Dexter. Uh, primarily, one of the reasons I got motivated to invite you is uh, you're already ending your master's. You're basically at the height of your academic life as a student. And um, knowing what you know now, I would like to you know, dwell on those insights and draw upon it because um, we're only young once. We're only young ones, and maybe there are things that the future needs to hold on to, um, knowing that our prior conversations have been about culture and dance. You know, both of us uh, know that appreciation. So I would just like to start in uh, very simple for our, uh, for our audience, in that your day-to-day, -day, how do you approach that mentally? you're tackling a lot of big things in life right now. How do you approach that in ways that you're able to deal with day in and day out? Uh, I, I guess we should, I, I, I will start on the pre-pandemic. <clears throat> no. uh, during those days, uh, I have this kind of uh, body option. No, that I, There's a need for me to wake up at five. There's a need for me to wake up at six, prepare for... 15 to 30 minutes only and then I will go to uh, school, the office, and then prepare for my class and then right after morning session, lunch. Lunch break, <clears throat> talk to my peers, talk to the students, and <clears throat> usually I talk to my peers, my colleagues in the school because I wanted to ask something based on their experience as well since I am the youngest. I am the youngest instructor in, ano, in college and that's the time that I learned a lot from them and I, based, on their own, based also on their experiences, I learned how to handle different <clears throat> pressures in college since, yeah, as what I have, uh, mentioned earlier, I am the uh, youngest and I am also neophyte in this kind of uh, academic level. Right after that, school school matter I, classes in the afternoon 
1 p.m. onwards, and right after, a bit of clubs and organizations that I have handled. And right after, I asked my partner to to cook to cook for a dinner or are we going to eat out instead of cooking dinner inside our, our room and then rest so then same cycle the same cycle the question is uh is it tiresome pre-pandemic i am very very energetic because i am an extrovert person i i i draw a lot of energy based on the energy of uh, the person that who I'm dealing with every day, so I really love I really love face to face conversations. I really love actions. I I I love to see actions of other people instead of talking in front of the laptop. But by the time the pandemic hits our country and isolations were already you know uh implemented by our national and local government units uh, that's the time that i was isolated and I, I i gained a lot of weight because this is my cycle this is my daily cycle <clears throat> i woke up i will not prepare i will not prepare myself for and physically i will not prepare myself for the job because my bed is just behind my laptop so there's no physical activity at all. All, you, uh, all I need to do is just to wake up and then go to my chair and then work. Next is, I will not eat breakfast. Just like the same with pre-pandemic times that there's a need for me to prepare my tummy because I know that physical uh, face-to-face sessions will, re- will also test my, my body, physical body, and as well as my, my brain brain function because there are times that if I will not eat breakfast my English is just limited for only one sack of rice so it's just equivalent of one sack of rice so right after the first period there's a need for me to fill my brain again with different types of vocabularies so I need to survive during the pre-pandemic but right now I cannot first session I will in the middle of my first session during the isolations I will not survive already. So there's a need for me to parang ah, I need to I need to sleep again. So right after the morning morning session, sleep. Then I wake up around 12 noon. I will not eat breakfast and lunch. I will not eat. Not 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 like the pre-pandemic life. Then I will conduct classes. Then that's the time that I will uh, that's the time that my uh by the time that Siguro mga 5, 5 p.m., 5 or 6 p.m., that's the time that my body will ask for a food. Um, my uh, acid reflux will attack. My peptic ulcer will attack. So I have a lot of diseases as well during the isolation. So, and even up till, uh, until now. And, yun. Uh, I usually take, my, take a bath around 6 p.m., so instead of preparing myself early in the morning for the bat for the whole day battle, I will. It's just turn around like a turning table, right? Um, another is I have friends uh, during the ano uh, during the 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 late uh, the late pandemic period, like siguro mga twenty twenty late twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. That's the time that I was already exposed to external life, like. There, uh, there's a lot of people already invited me to, uh, to join with different organizations like badminton, swimming clubs, uh, music classes. On the first period of those invitations, I rejected all of them because I find it, I find it very awkward at first because I was already, the, the isolation was already in my system, so. I think that parang it's very awkward to join directly then my body is still on the verge of isolation. So by the time if I will push myself to join with this kind of groups, I don't know what will happen. I don't know what what uh, what is the reaction of my body. So 
also by the time I also uh, parang there is a, a a very slow pace of integrating myself or integrating my system to this kind of invitations. That's the time that I also realized that I I was already eaten by the isolation. So I guess I, I am I am no longer extrovert because if I will go out the premises of my building because we are I am live, currently living in, in a dormital for four years. If I will go outside, my my energy level will be dropped down. So that that's already an alarm. That's already alarming. So because I am not like this, I am an extrovert. I am not an introvert. So. When my friends fetch me here inside my room, high school friends, my my friends in badminton and even in swimming, they they've invited me, they pushed me, they they fetch me here in my room, and then we go to do to, to the venues, no. The the, the I I my my myself I I observe myself that I am not, I am not happy with this kind of venues. Um, that's the time that I asked that's the time that I asked my friends in in the med medicine like my psychology psychiatrists who are also doctors licensed individuals and practitioners I asked for their medical advices and even their expertise to run some tests because I observe a lot of negative things based on my based on my actions based on based on my uh, brain function and the way I think and my perspective is already not the same with my pre-pandemic life luckily I was not diagnosed with anxiety uh, there's a bit of anxiety but I, uh, I was not diagnosed with depression luckily it's not depression but it's just burnout so I I took a lot of tests, different programs. I made my own, uh, sir. Uh, I made my own tests based also on the adapted tests uh, available in the internet. And then I realized this test is not appropriate for my current situation. That's why I I already asked my friends. And then based on the results, yeah, I I am on the verge of highest point or highest peak of burnout. Since I am no longer the same with the pre-pandemic -pandem life, and there is a struggle between productivity, artistry over burnout. So the life, the life I am, I have right now is not the same with the pre-pandemic, and I am every night I am dreaming of those days, no. That we, 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 during our class, that we are laughing each other, we are talking about different things and stuff. I am dreaming, I am, parang there's a reminiscing program in my head right now for the past few days or past few nights. Now, uh, uh, how I wish that this, I don't know, this kind of activities will be um, resumed as early as now so that everything will be para recharge or reset or reform as it is because there's a need for me to be with these kind of activities like the pre-pandemic and hopefully the government will remove the face mask because my face is no longer happy with the face mask so that's my that's my take or that's my life before and right now Thank you so much for that, uh, Sir Dexter. I am also quite nostalgic of 2019-2020 LPU Davao up until March. Um, fun fact, we were actually prepared for distance learning for a very different reason. You were there when we were oriented for, uh, we were oriented for Canvas and uh, we were preparing that because there were a lot of earthquakes in that time and then it was Thursday, we had the orientation. Friday, the campus was disinfected as a precautionary. Sunday, lockdown, and we never saw the campus for months. I guess it's, I guess it's, I uh, know, um, Thursday when we conducted our, when we conducted the orientation for Canvas, 
then Friday it's already the implementation of isolations, right? I'm, it's it, it all happened so suddenly. Yeah, that's, it's, a, that's, that's what I remember. Yes. So for me, uh, everything is just so fast. The, the, yeah. uh, the, the, the swift paradigm shift of academic, uh, academic approach, delivery of instructions, was moved to different platform. That was also the reason why I don't want to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I know that I am not the only person who's you know, um, having a hard time dealing with technical matters, knowing that I am not a techie person. I also have, I also have my colleagues with me, who's asking me most of the time, like calling most of the time. Sir Dex, paasis ako, Sir Dex, ganito kasi alam mo to, Sir Dex. That was so draining. It's really something, uh, I actually had a conversation with um, other faculty members and some members of the admin that we've designed our teachers, the way, the way we've educated our teachers has always been with a classroom and with a board. Mm -mm. And we were very worried, and rightfully so, what would happen when we would shift um, to Canvas full time. Because Canvas, the way we oriented when our canvas at the time was when there's an earthquake and the 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 school needs to close down for a few days because you know city inspector's office the buildings are rather tall they clear it for a day or two we would be online and working on that and then we would be back we did not expect that we would be using it full time and for example my former program the uh, Bachelor of Science in Management Accounting. I'm now in Business Administration, but Management Accounting got hit very hard. We were about 20 students, and at the end of the third term, which was the first one that was fully online, we were just two. I think it was me and uh, Ate Veglor, but it's, it was really a shock to everybody when suddenly your life's different. Just a snap. Your life's different. And what, what I really liked about what you described earlier, Sir Dex, was how you changed gradually, psychologically, and physiologically. Because people, people think, and this is a big misconception on mental health, is that it's all in your head. Well, that's not really true because one of the principles of psychology is that it will always be biologically manifesting somewhere. And the fact that you were no longer physically preparing yourself to go out and meet people triggered a reaction down the road that you didn't want to meet people, period. Like, you're an athlete, Sir Dex, like a celebrated athlete and also a decorated dancer in the professional sense. It's really different when you tune your body to do something. You, you, at one point, you don't even need to think about it, right? Like, um, a lot of people ask me why uh, it's such a difficult thing for people to you know, learn kinesthetic, uh, kinesthetic things because they were very curious um, as to how I managed to do it. Full disclosure, I am a differently abled person uh, with a condition. Um, and I explained it to them that Actually, it's not in your brain. It's in your spine. And, and the way it's remembered is it's on a different memory system. It, it's on a faster memory system that doesn't have conscious control. And, and while we're not necessarily going out and doing a field demo dance competition, the same memory system seems to be, at least as I would hypothesize, affecting us on a more subtle day-to-day -day thing like we're no longer going out getting shaved uh, going on a shower on a regular basis and then leaving the house like that was all pre-programmed in us pre-pandemic and now we're seeing two three years down the road what the long-term implications were when we were no longer doing the same things like um it's so different now that if we had the opportunity to return back to class three months after the lockdowns began, we would have jumped on it. But now you've seen, um, especially with my time on the student council, 
that there's now a lot of friction against going back to face to face because it seems that everyone, teachers, students included, um, are still tuned into the isolation. And that's not necessarily their fault. That's just a consequence of what it's been like um, both living in isolation and living in fear while in isolation. Those are very two different motivators. And I would like to ask you a question, Sir, um, Sir Dex, in that um, knowing what you know now, um, what is the number one thing you could recommend and why? Knowing what you know now. I'm speechless with that kind of like question. What's one, what's one um, thing, one thing um, you could give to people that you should absolutely hold on to? Uh, there's a lot actually that I can share, but you know, um, with the the pacing, the coping mechanism of an individual is not the same with ours, right? And the pacing and the coping mechanism should be partnered or gelled with together because this will help us to recover as fast as we can and this is this will also fill those blanks already no and one thing that i can share in or, or a tip of advice maybe for the, yeah for the students since i am also a student and our age and our age is just you know three it, or it's four not years. that far it's not, not that, that far, far. So maybe we can share, we, yeah, we can share, we can really share um, some uh, activities, you know, uh, not just in the academy, but also as well in the school or in our personal lives. I have three, uh, three sets here. Uh, first is time management. Time management is cliche. Time no, we, management. We say it all the time. Be we say on it all time. The time. We're sick no. of hearing it. <laughs> yes, I have also, I am also sick of the word time, I management, because uh, whether we like it or we like it the most, there's a certain area of our life or there's a certain part of our life that we cannot easily handle things according to its priorities, according to its values, according to our personal practices, and according to our recreation. So, I have already four areas, no? So, the time management, I, 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 I was informed by my friend, uh, psychology. Yeah, I asked her, now, time management is already cliche. Then why you are you trying to push this one, <laughs> knowing that I am no longer happy hearing this with, with such kind of word? According to her, give me four words that will describe that your own definition or that will give you or that, that will formulate your own definition of time management that's why i mentioned for earlier right priorities values practices and leisure or recreation so in time management you need to prioritize things according to its weight just say for example uh, okay for example our life as a student we know already that the academic life in the tertiary level i have to be more specific mm -hmm. and even on and even on a senior high school no senior high school is already academic academically demanding no but iba ang demand no the demands in higher education is so far from senior high school they're higher in their demands. It's even higher, the fact, the name of itself, higher education. Now, no, now, now, before we continue, um, I'd just like to clarify for all the um, senior high school or junior college that are listening. It's not that we're degrading you, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm from the pioneering batch of STEM. I know how hard it can be, uh, but it's just that, the the anticipation and expectation that will be asked of you from your professors and instructors will be a notch higher. Um, yes. And don't worry, you grow as a person in the time in between. 
<laughs> so, wait, I am also I am also a senior high school instructor. I am also part of the pioneering batch of senior high school instructors way back then, last 2017. Also, oh, so someone on the other side of the table. Yeah, and I know, I know the, I know the life. I have observed a lot of characters and attitudes as well, and I also asked my my former students about their perspective about senior high school. A lot of them say that manali lang. Uh, this is the preparation for tertiary level so we can if we can build this level how much more we can deal with college by the time that they reach on college sir mundang nako <laughs> so with, mm. with that kind of ano with that kind of uh with that kind of energy parang they're already on the hype during the senior high school level but unfortunately during the by the time that they reach the tertiary level It's just drop down because at least this is what i really love the most during the high uh, during the first batch no first two years of senior high school their energy is at the peak they know that they can they know that they've already uh they've already uh experienced the life of junior high school and they surpass the challenges how much more the senior high school and how much more if they will surpass the senior high school tertiary college or tertiary level will be the next one to surpass but a lot of students during the, the, the first batch this is based on my observation based on the observation of my former students not in general ha baka baka ma misinterpret at tayo uh, based on my observation former students in the in I, i almost mentioned the name of the institution uh we're not dropping them, names yeah we will not dropping names <laughs> a lot of them dropped out in college because what's what's the problem time management peer pressure external pressure Uh, professional mismatch or professional mismatch means um, they think that they are already on the track on the right track of getting that kind of program but unfortunately nag U-turn sila so parang instead of having this kind of road they took a U-turn and then took another program so para ah okay professional I It's not pala professional mismatch. It's academic mismatch. Yun. Another problem is, another definition of academic mismatch is they took a specific program in senior high school. For example, TVL. And then they took nursing in, on, in, in, on the tertiary level. So, you as a TVL... You know that you are skill-based person. You are honed by instructors via skill-based program. Yet you go to STEM-related program in college. So what will happen? Culture shock. So these reasons that I have mentioned are the primary reasons why my former students dropped out. Because they don't know what to do. They don't know what are the precautionary measures. They don't know what are the red flags. And they don't even know what are the practices of this kind of program in college. That is very important. That's why I ask them, I, I always remind my former students, especially the first batch, if you wish to become this kind of professional soon, you know, you, you need to study as well the life and the practices of that kind of program because this program will teach you to become this this to become this kind of young professional so what does it mean you need to study the system as well of the organization you need to study the movements and the practices in order for your system to accept this physical or mental activities daily activities of this organization and by the time that your system already accepted this one then 
culture shock will not be the main reason why you drop out. Because I have a lot of students as well who attempted to enroll in University of Southeastern Philippines and USAP is my undergraduate school. And I am very proud. I will state it clearly. State it loud and proud. Loud and proud. I have a lot of students who really attempted to um, be part of that institution, knowing that this institution has a very, very high... No, it's not very, very high, but at least... This institution has a, has a high standards when it comes to admissions because since this university is a state university, they need to choose, they need to filter people, they need to choose individuals who are uh, deserved to be in that kind of institution. Since, as well, the government already subsidized all students are there so there's there's a need for them or there's there's a need for the institution to filter these uh, young aspirants so i have a lot of students as uh, ask me sir okay ba sa yusep yeah it's very okay do but can you make it yeah i I, 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 surpassed, I surpassed the challenges so I am very I am very proud that I am a Yusekian. So by the time they they parang that that's their initial motivation. Kung nakaya ni sir ang admission dapat kaya ko rin. Luckily, they surpassed the the first challenge or the first trial. Along the way that they are trying to finish the program, the desired program, some of them dropped out. Because the demands are no longer the demands are no longer normal. Not just in USAP actually, but across tertiary academic institutions. Yes. Third years are usually the the highest attrition rate out of all the years. Yes. One to four. Third years. First and second years. year. First and second year. That's the that's just I know that's just a test how far how how far you are, how far that your body can adjust with the different challenges or at least adopt the system of a, a particular institution. Third year is the start of filtering individuals with a, with, with a particular uh, program because, yeah, academic uh, education is for all. But not everyone can mentally survive the challenges. Aside that you are intelligent, we are talking about IQ and EQ right now. No? Yes. We were trying to equate this one. If, you're, if your IQ is high, then be sure that it's also equal with your EQ. Because um, the challenges along the way are no longer typical type of challenges. I can still remember when I was still fourth year, fourth year college, uh, being a Yusepian, uh, education, uh, education student. I remember those days that I need to finish 28 tasks within a week. 28, 28 tasks is not, it's not a joke. I priority, I, I try to weigh Weigh this uh, practice, uh, weigh this task according to the submissions, date, uh, deadlines, due dates mm -hmm. of due dates. But I was not able to submit a good output. It's just a, for me, eh, pasa ko na lang to bahala kayo dyan. Bagsak nyo ako, okay lang. Because that's the demand, oh no? It just imagine. You, you you just imagine that we have 12 courses in a week and these 12 courses are major sometimes it's skill it's a demonstration based exam or demonstration based activity so there's a need for me to rehearse because rehearsals will really refine our movements since we are PE teacher or PE students and P, the nature of PE is more on demonstration 
Therefore, there's a need for us to rehearse. For us to have a perf at least close to perfection demonstrations. And knowing that demonstration also consumes a lot of time. So, we don't even know, even not, not just me, but also my classmates, we don't even know how to manage it. We just cry. Cry. That's, cry. The, that's your primary reaction, cry. That's the primary reaction and that's the primary outlet of our body. And again, crying is not an indicator that you are a co coward or weak. Okay. It's just a good source of expressing these negative emotions. I, this I is also to... based on what I have learned in being skills because I am one of the instructors of being skills. Yes. Luckily, I survived the challenge of being skills. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, for context, uh, being skills is a course designed by LPU that's being piloted throughout all the campuses through the LPU family. But I would like to... I would like to stick on that point that you added earlier, uh, Sir Dexter, in that um, crying isn't an outlet we should be ashamed of. In appropriate moderation, of course, but we should accept it for what it is and it's a natural reaction. Um, because it seems like nowadays, uh, as you've mentioned earlier, you're peer pressured into not crying, not flinching. Now, for most social situations, that may be true, but when you're you know, on your own and there's no social precedent to uphold, I think it's perfectly natural to do so. Um, because if you're not gonna cry when no one's watching, you're gonna cry when everyone's watching. That's gonna be a very big difference. Uh -uh. Um, and especially when it comes to men, um, crying is very frowned upon in general that's uh, the that's the perception yeah. of the early 20s that men should manifest this kind of character men should be like this men should be like that it and should have bravado according to statistics mm. according to statistics in japan no there's a lot of studies about uh the mental health issues in japan men has men have this kind of higher cases of suicidal attempts and even deaths because of depression because of this kind of perception that men should wear this kind of mask most of the time men should not be like this men should not be like that so the society already dictates what should what should be the character of an individual and that's very bad that's based on my ano ha, that this kind of idea is based on what i have learned uh, the different types of cultures no? since I am also teaching culture-related culture, culture related courses. And this type of practices should not should be vanished. This should be removed in the society but the society will try to dictate someone's mask. That's not a healthy that's not a healthy system. That's not a healthy way of uh, promoting an individual no and yeah um as what i have mentioned earlier that crying is a good source or crying is a, a best outlet of releasing our emotions another tip that i can also give is you choose your peers wisely because uh your peers we only have two peers or we only have two sets of friends mm -hmm. go ahead sir the one who will be with you during the happy times and Fair will be banished. Friends. Fair weather and will friends. be banished if you are already on the pitfall. And the other one is you choose a friend that we have a friend that who's there between ups and downs. That's the reason why during my fourth year life, I have a lot of personal problems that already pushed me to the pitfall. I am already at, at, on the pitfall. No? I decided not to conduct my final demonstration, teaching demonstration. That's, all, that's the only key for me to wear the toga. And I decided not, not to prepare physically. Like demonstrations, materials, teaching aids, 
and speeches and even the classroom setup. I don't have any plans at all. By the time that I share this problem to my really closest friends of mine, no, my, no, one of my classmates actually, he pushed, I, I, I cried a lot. Like, siguro three hours, non-stop crying. That's a lot and, of crying. Yeah, that's a lot. Because, you know, um, I was already on the verge of, I know, I was already on the verge of anxiety and depression during that time. And uh, by the time that I also shared my, my struggles to my friends, I feel so, um, I, I feel so, um, comf with the comfortability, you know, uh, I feel so relieved because I, I choose a right person to, to share with. Because this is very important. Um, the importance of choosing a friend wisely is this. There's a friend kasi na who will just dare to listen to your to, to your negative negativities, no? The emotions and all the problems. Tapos, this person will just say, oh, oh, mm -mm, I understand you. And that's very important. Yung, the type of person that, uy, wait lang, may, 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 ganyan may din ako, no? The person that we really need is the one who really listens a lot. Yung, this person will not cut your, your emotions. Tapos, so, ay, kaya ko man din, kaya ko man gani. No, parang, it's, it's a way of invalidating your emotions and your experiences because this person already surpassed that, that kind of challenge. You know, uh, I, I am very lucky that I have that kind of person during those days. And I have decided to prepare everything, my teaching, my final teaching demonstrations, two hours before my time. That's why I, I decided to print all my, my materials, created my own lesson plan. Yeah, she was there. She was there watching me, and I asked her, "Do not, do not help me. All you need to do is just there to look over me." So I am very lucky to have this kind of friend, and I have also have personal friends. No, not not in the academy, but as well as in you know my 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 life. Life of being an extrovert, of course, you will really expect that you have a lot of friends, different sets of friends. And by the time that we are we gather each other, you no, know, and and talk about life, we cry most of the time. Of course, we are under the presence of alcohol. I cannot, I can really deny that fact. You know, it's you know, you cannot easily share something very personal if you are not under the presence of alcohol. It's whether really like down it, there. Whether you like it or, or whether you agree or you agree the most. <laughs> or you like it, you like it the most. That's the reality, yes. You have this kind of confidence because you are under the presence of alcohol. And then you are very confident to share your personal struggles or personal something or matters to your friends because, because of the magic potion of Red Horse, Tanduay. Sorry, but we are not, ano ha, we are not. Please, Mary and I are not sponsored by this liquor, sa. I just no, mentioned and, this. <laughs> and, and we endeavor to um, for people to drink in moderation, please. Though yeah. I personally do not drink alcohol, as yeah. per, as that's, per my beliefs. Good. But it's a common practice that we really should address um, in academe because it does happen. I have a lot of, I have a lot of um, batchmates that are constantly just going out and drinking and. They are. They do their best to be civilized, and there's always one of them that doesn't drink, and that's really key. Is that one of them doesn't drink because somebody has to keep eyes on all of them. Um, and one of the things you mentioned earlier that I found really interesting, Sir Dexter, is that um, is that the selection of peers is really important in the sense that you're gonna need them. You're gonna need them. Period. Because the um, the journey through college is not a solitary one. Very, yeah. very few people in history will ever go through college as a singular person. They will have, yes. they will have cliques and so on. Um, That's why it's very important to choose club. Uh, this is also the reason clubs. why I, I why why I, I managed to 
ma why I manage these different types of stress during my college days because of the club and organizations that I choose to engage with. Though I am not active internally sa USEP way back then, I choose clubs outside the institution because I know that I, aside that I have a support system, I can easily learn from them because these people are from the different paths of life, different walks of life. And with these different walks of life, they do have different experiences. And they also have different practices. So with that kind of ano, with that kind of composition no, inside the or inside a specific organization, it means that these people are already rich with experience. So there's a need for me to listen to them as well. And there's a need for me to at least know them as well. Because they're that's the start of ano eh, that's the start of education eh. You 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 just simply listen to them, no, the way they talk, the way they the way they move, the way they think, their ideas, perspectives. That's the start of education, eh? Personal education. So for me, choosing club and organizations <coughs> excuse me, is very but be sure that this club and organization will not put you to burnout. Because burnout is also another problem. Uh, burnout is the manifestation of the manifestation of higher level of stress wherein you are no longer happy with what you are doing. You are no longer happy with what you are thinking right now. And you are no longer happy with your interests. You are, you, you're, the interests rate or the interest rate para para mga ano home credit <laughs> the interest level the, the interest level of ano no of a particular activity is no longer at the peak it's already dropped drop down so with that kind of that, that's already up a red flag if the organization already exhausts you then that's already a red flag so I, it's important to choose peers at the same time clubs and organizations because the clubs and organizations in college will not just help you your your mental health they will not just assist your mental health but they will also hone your skills and talents that is not related to your program for example i am a p uh, everyone knows already in lpu Davao that i am a p teacher so a lot of students expected uh, the, the expectation of students rather is like this Ah, magaling tong sumayaw si sir. Ah, ganito to si sir. Ah, physically ganito si sir. Rain pack, no. <laughs> Rain pack, no. Because I am musically inclined person. So, I, cho I, I choose a specific organizations outside you said before because I want an organization to help me with my inclination, not my profession. Because the institution already honed me with my desired program but unfortunately actually it's not my design program it's music education but unfortunately music education here in the philippines is very expensive well let's it's go back. expensive it's also um it's also locationally difficult um geographically yeah it, it's location we have here in, in ui university of immaculate conception it's music education but you know um the fact kasi that I already entered the premises of University of Southeast in Philippines, that's already a blessing. And not all of the students can enter that institution. That's why I just grabbed the opportunity and then just finish the the just finish my major uh, my my program, which is the BPESP, because that's the first name of BP BPE before. It's not BPED. Right now it's BPED. But before Bachelor of Physical Education major in school physical education because there's a lot of major kasi. Well, anyway, uh, let's uh, move forward. Yeah, again, yun, uh, I choose uh, I choose organizations that will help my inclination, not my uh, my desired program. And then, because of this, because of 
this type of ano no, mindset that I choose right organization. My inclination pushed me to have a lot of projects rather than being a PE teacher. You get it? <laughs> being there, a musician. Like there's more opportunity for your you know, interests and motivated inclinations yes. to blossom. And, yes. and uh, I'd like to dwell on that for a bit because there's a lot of people uh, who perceive like, oh, if we go to uh, business administration, we want to be in business 24 seven. It's not, it's all work, no play. No, we're still, we still have things we're greatly interested in. Um, for example, you know me as someone with a photograph, uh, photographic background and have made films in the past, though I will not dwell on that here. But but there's a part of you that you need to attend to when it comes to uh, being an adult, basically, because when you're an adult, a lot more things uh, come online, they say in your brain, a lot more interests come online. And you have to address that in a meaningful and productive way. It's not that it's not that we're devaluing our profession. Our profession is valuable. That's why we went in with all our difficulty and pain to pursue our profession. But we also have to color that in with our need for self-expression and our need for our hobbies and interests. Like that's a good thing to note nowadays because a lot of students, when they go into it, they're just thinking degree. Degree. That's all I need. I'm not doing. I'm not joining anything else. I'm just going for degree. And while there may be some merit to that, uh, especially if you're a board program, like a teacher or an accountant or what have you, um, especially with medical boards, there still needs to be a time and a place for you to express your interests outside of your profession. And I'm sure that really helped you in figuring out things that were bothering you about the profession in general, Sir Dexter, because I would imagine that that gave you the distance you need to consolidate and to figure things out. Uh, am I, um, is that correct? Yeah. And yeah, I, I also mentioned earlier, you know, support system. Uh that's already under the club and organization. Because a club and organization is a different group of people. That's just to hone your interests, your hobbies, your inclinations, you as a person, or at least they will just help you with your academic life. But if you will have a support system like friends and family who 100% understand understands your situation, understands your character, understands the wholesome of being you, the, 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 the term is wholesome, the, 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 the wholesomeness of being you, then you, you already have a support system. This is also the, the reason why I have students not just in my former school, but as well as in LPU. You know? um, I, I ask them, Individually, you know, diba? during our days in 2019, that I I asked some questions. That's that's a clickbait already. Na parang makarilit ako sa question ni Sir Dex. Then right after our class, there's a lot of students na Sir, and can I ask for a minute for a can I ask for a minute to talk with you something related to your question earlier? So based on our conversation. One of the primary problem of their support system and is not the friends, but it is the family. And knowing that the family should be uh, the, the, the main source of good support system. Because that's, parang that's the primary people who can, primary people who, who's always with you inside the same roof, right? And and I cannot judge because that's the problem of their family. I cannot also dictate what to do because what if I, if I will give what if, if I will give a specific um, resolution and then this person implemented that kind of resolution will turn it 
will will be the, the, the will be the, uh, the the turn out will be good or bad that's why i ask them these sets of students na what will be your what will be your resolution what will be your action with that kind of family problem will that kind of resolution have a good output or a bad output what will be the possible consequence consequences if you will choose this kind of, of decision or if you will choose this kind of another decision so the, the support system should be established but you need or but we but we need to at least think that our support system is not also perfect system sometimes the system will fail right yeah the the failure of the system will not will, should not i know we should not dictate as well your your emotional quotient nor your emotional capacity because if you as part of the system also have this kind of parang emotional drain or the you, you know um there's also a failure inside you within you then you cannot think of a resolution that's a very very important kasi how how a person thinks for a, uh, for us for a resolution and then all of you will work together in order for you to establish again a good system and nowadays family problems are very rampant different very problems. true very very ano siya, it's a very broad it's a very broad um topic about family problems because there are different types of societal statuses in each societal status the poor the average and uh, the, the poor the average and the rich brackets i will just simply state the three areas yeah, we're not are. describing the eight different tax brackets of course. <laughs> those are that will take too long and that yeah. is for your economics class um that's yeah. not right here um with this kind of social statuses no each status has a specific problem on their own with this kind of ano with this kind of problem i learned it from dr maribeth galindo no that each that the, she, actually she's the source of this ano this insight that the support system should be established and people inside that kind of system members of that kind of system particular system should have a good uh, resolutions not just one but multiple resolutions in order for a system to be established again and i i also ask mom uh, i also mom i, I asked dr galindo about that no what if all of them are emotionally i know emotionally problematic, uh, problematic? so what will be the unknown can you just allow you these people should allow express themselves first before they will think they will think for a particular resolution because an individual but this is the uh, no this is parang a quote of a folk you know, na do not think if you are sad or do not think for for do not decide if you are sad or you're happy because it will just turn out something not unrealistic no or the turn out should the turn out the expectation of the turn out of that kind of resolution if you are really happy or you are really sad is not realistic so that's that's the ano parang that's the the lesson that i've learned with that kind of i know support system uh support system issues and support system uh, the members of the support system should act upon it for or on a particular problem so uh um, with regards to mental health these three uh, these areas that i have mentioned are very important for an individual to survive college because college is one of the most crucial part of being a human or being an individual that's also the start of having personal crisis eh? because there are times that you are your expectation is very very broad you want the then, world you're young you want the world that is yes. very common 
that's very common problem or thinking of an individual right in as a young professional you re, you want to achieve this kind or this certain certain achievement or goal in a very very young age the question is do you have all the resources to do you have do you have second options just in case you fail that you fail with that kind of process three do you have all the means and ways four do you have every uh, do you have this kind of character that will test you to become one five do you have this kind of options that just in case just in case that you have this kind of problem along the way, you will not do some U-turns. Because, yun yung ano, yun, yun yung problem ng, yun yung problem na mga uh, young professionals. Even I myself, I'm a young professional. And I've been a lot of crisis for the past months. I've been questioning my productivity. I've been questioning... Uh, Kaya ko man to, but di ko na siya magawa. I've also shared my journey, my therapy journey, in my class during the art appreciation, in BSMT, ano, in BSP, uh, Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy, 2-1. BSPH. BSPH 2-1. I've shared my therapy session with them, and they've said na, Sir, burnout, nasa burnout ka talaga ngayon, sir. And they've agreed. Na I'm on the verge of having this kind of problem. And, yun nga, um, the crisis, the, the midlife, it's not midlife crisis. It's not it's midlife. Not, You're still in your midlife. 20s. You're not 45. I'm, I'm not 45. I'm not wishing for, ano pa, I'm not wishing for for loan and coffins and all. But I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, you know, kasi, because of the external environment, no, the, the the external forces will also dictate your mind. No, na dapat at the age of this, at the age of that, ganito ako, ganyan ako. It, for me, it's normal. It's normal to desire something based on your goals in life, right? But the question is, do you you do you still have the energy? Do you have the the materials, the resources with you along the way? Do you have this kind of sustainability program with you? It, it's like the char- it's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Sir Dex. Yes. Like you keep looking for the ticket. You keep looking for that one thing that you really want, but you start forgetting about the joys of chocolate. Yes. You know, you're just you're just looking for the quantity, not for the quality. And, and there's a question there, like, who are you really doing this degree for? Like, you're yeah. suffering this daily. Um, th- like, you're the one taking the exams. You're the one studying. You're the one getting reprimanded by your professor, either justly, mostly. That's just. Uh, sometimes it's unjust. And if so, you should really report that in your evaluation, please. Um, but you're the one that's going to get the degree at the end of the day. And... I think that it's a far too common trend that people are doing their degree because other people say so, or worse, they want it to be something that makes them accepted in life. And that's not really enough motivation. Yes, Um, but we cannot also invalidate uh, that kind of reasons why they wanted to become that kind of person because that's their source of energy to pursue that kind of desires and goals in life. But, you know... Um, having that kind of that having that kind of energy or the source of energy is very tiresome, exhausting because you're you're, you're just thinking of ganito dapat ganito ako dapat ganyan ako dapat ganito ang machine ko within this when it becomes appearance substance takes a back seat yes I can still remember. By the time I entered the premises of graduate school way back 2018. So I'm taking my master's way back 2018. That feels like forever. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, last 2019, it should be my graduation na tapat. 
But there's an unfortunate event that really caused me to extend and transfer to another institution. That's the time I did. That that's the time that there's a lot of realization. Because my my realization, uh, my my plan is should be like this. At the age of 24 or 25, 24. At the age of 24, I am a master's graduate. At the age of 28, I am already a PhD graduate. Or doctor PhD before graduate. doctor before 30 goals. Yes, that's that's really my ano my goals in life, because. You know, uh, I am, I am a son. I am a son of not rich uh, couple, and I have this kind of desire that I wanted to give them this kind of life. But you know, re- realization and reality hits hard, harder than what you expected. I de- I, I realized that ah uh, okay. I don't have all the means. I don't have all this kind of sustainability. I decided to stop for a while and take a break and replenish all the missing parts and areas and go back to the track. That's why 2019, late 2019, I decided to enroll to other another institution still here in Davao City and then I express this one to my colleagues in LPU Davao. I I I really do have a good support system. There are my there are my support system right now. The, like like it's a very rare, no? It's a very rare uh friend like very out of the blue conversation like for example, Dr. Dr. Galindo. She will just mention I she will just chat or text. Musta na ang masters ni Modong. <laughs> diba? Yeah, that's a very rare. That's a very rare ano co- connection. Like wala. Ma'am, oy, ano yung mga kugi para remind anak, ma'am. <laughs> But the fact that the person connects to at least ask for ano ask for something, no? na uy musta naman nangamusta no that kind of fellowship was already good a good indicator that you have a good support system and right now uh right now okay, I will go go directly to the mental to my therapy sessions because um the therapy session of burnout is not the same with depression and anxiety there is a very thick line based on my experience and based of what I have learned And based also on my research right now in in masters because burnout is one of my indicators. Main my main indicator actually. By uh last year, uh, last 2020, di ba, we are not allowed to go outside. Yes, there were periods of um Month. ECQ like <clears throat> 14 14 day periods which often stretched into the months like 14 day period you get three days to do your groceries and we're back inside hmm. like that's how it was that, that, uh, that was the time that I was so problematic because aside that I don't have rockets knowing that rockets you know rockets are very I know very important to us individuals who are self-supporting so I need to look for another side hustles you know All of my side hustles well, was vanished, like an instant, like a pop, like a bubble. It was just erased in my program. So I have a lot of things to think, no? Now, what will be another source of income aside from teaching in this institution? And that was the time that I am not eating. Mm. I started not to eat breakfast. I started not to eat lunch just to save for dinner. Everything should be saved during dinner, so that I can manage to uh, manage to have a good budget meal and survive for that week, knowing that we are not allowed to roam around the streets and the streets are already uh, it's just like a ghost town already. And by the time that there is already an enhanced, a modified enhanced community quarantine. 
protocols. That was the time that Hay salamat, uh, makakain na ako. Kahit two times a day. And I am not I am no longer thinking about how I am no longer thinking about the quality of my performance as a teacher during that time. I am already thinking of my survival. And I am no longer using my inclinations and my talents just to survive. It's just the income that I am getting from the institution where I, where I am in right now. And then, by the time that uh, I receive a lot of, I, I receive ayudas and all, ayudas, uh, salary, something like that. that parang, okay, uh, I need to eat. That's already the red flag. Eating too much. Then yeah. right after eating is, there's a need for you to sleep. Only two activities for weekend. Eating, sleeping without taking a bath. That's that's already a red flag. Like you're you're already coping with the stress of your situation, and yes. and for th- for those who don't understand the context here, it's not that Sir Dexter didn't have a good job at the time. It's that the even the institution was having a lot of difficulties reaching out. Um, yes. I I know a lot of good employees, for example. Um, had to be you know, had to be carefully let go by the institution because it was just that challenging. Like, how do you run a school when you're not even allowed to leave the house? Like, yes. And especially with LPU, in that we have a lot, we're blessed with a very very experienced faculty. Like that is one of the things we're so grateful for, is that um, a lot of the faculty. I think I think a good like significant portion of the faculty around 60% are doctorate holders, but, you know, they also fell into the age range that fell into caution at the time, which froze a lot of things up at school. Um, One thing I'd like to emphasize there, uh, Sir Dex, is as your difficulties increased, it seems like your Maslow priorities regressed from expression to survival. And how that changed you mentally and physically where you were no longer just searching for meaning but searching for survival and in a way coping with pain uh mentally i am no longer thinking about my job i am just thinking about i am just thinking about survival like i'll just wake up i'll just wake up open my zoom account Talk a bit. I, I don't have any Zoom account during those days, but I'm just using Google Meet, right? <laughs> because I, I don't have credit card during that time. Uh, I just open my Google Meet, talk for a while. Okay, thank you, class. You just, uh, you, okay, I'll share to you the link of daily online class evaluation. I want you to answer this because you know already what's the drill, right? And then sleep. Physically, since we are already allowed to go outside with the use of those passes. I ate a lot. I, I was not able to go home. I was not able to visit my parents during that time. That's the oh, that's also an increase of I uh, know one of the factors that that's why I am I am I know I am into survival mode. And by the time that I receive Ayuda, thanks LGU <laughs> I receive ayuda, and then the ayuda, that's already an overwhelming amount. Yeah, because you know? it's it's like half a month's salary right there. Oh, oh right there. So it, it's not, it was not, it's not from the institution, huh, the ayuda, mm. it's from the LGU. Yeah. So ayuda yeah. is basically, to, to our non-native speakers, ayuda is a uh, subsidy that they give us um, from the government. From the government to help ease the burden. Uh, it's like a paycheck for your troubles. Um, but yeah, financially, sudden jolts in resources are very unhelpful to people, yes. especially people in need, um, which is why winning the lottery is often a curse. But let's continue on that point. Like your mental state was now. I was deprived from hunger. I was horrified. Now I'm eating like a king. Would you go I, on with I, that? I, 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 
I gain a lot of weight to the to the point that uh, you know, Claire, you know, you know already my physique during those days that I have already gained weight during 2019 because that's really my desire to become a chubby person because I am <laughs> already deprived of food during college because that's mm. our training. We need to maintain 45 kilos because that's part of our major in gymnastics. So with that point, I, 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 that's already part of my system that I need to, okay, physically fit. And by the time that I already have my own money, I will spend my own money to buy some luxurious food. Luxurious talaga, no? Uh, I can afford to buy these type of, types of food where I can treat myself most of the time. But, but by the time that it, by the time during the isolations, I was deprived with food. I just, I just ate once a day or sometimes wala because my supplies already um my supplies already ano na, consumed yeah, the and, scary thing about that and i'd like to add this for context is sometimes you do have the money but nobody's selling food yes because like, uh, because of the restrictions we are not uh, even the grab and the food panda during those days they were i know they were prohibited to do some uh to to roam around the city because they are also maybe they are the ones who exponentially scattered the virus so that was the time that i experienced physical pain like peptic ulcer um gastroesophageal reflux disease i have GERD during the, the that's the peak of my GERD problem i don't have a voice that's also the reason why i stopped music during those days uh, there are some portions of the year that i stopped I rem singing i remember you had a zoom call where your voice was just so coarse and the only yes. way you could get words out was if you were to drink warm water or tea because it was yes. just so coarse um, and and i asked my and i asked my my mother I asked my mother, uh, "Ma, can you can you can you buy this food for me and just left it outside the the dormitory so that I can get it right away or maybe later?" Then my mother is restricted to enter our barangay, so, diba? Because we are already, I uh, know we are already isolated based on the barangays, based on our locations and all. I was so deprived during those days. And what, mentally, I am mentally. Uh, what's on my mind is, okay, I will wake up if I will receive if I will receive uh, a notification from BPI that our salary was already in. That's the time that I will go roam around the city. By the time I receive ayuda, I roam around the city on my own. I I I, I rent a bike. I rent a bicycle. I roam around the city, and then I I search for food. That is good for good for a month, no? Uh, this food are processed food, and mm -hmm. knowing that I am inside the dormitory, we are not allowed to cook here. But I am I am cooking right now here inside the room, secretly, and uh, I gained weight because I ate five eight times a day. The book to the up to uh, to the point that my uniforms are no longer fit to oh my dear. I, know. I oh really dear. increase a lot of weight. Like I reach hundred flat one, one hundred. <laughs> it's just <laughs> that my students, you, Klizmer and your uh, other students at RPW, you cannot easily you cannot see me. Yeah, because you know, it's standing. a screen. Um, but it's a screen. The, the one in our mind, Sir Dex, is when you were still around in the 50, ki 50 kilogram range, when you were still quite gymnastic. Um, and this is really interesting because you were literally one of the most physically fit faculty before we started the isolation. Like you could do, oh my goodness, you could do cartwheels and backflips uh, before the isolation began. Like, yes, but I cannot do it right now. <laughs> if I will do it right now, of course, there's a lot of fractures will come. <laughs> And yeah, I continue, let's continue. During those days, no, uh, that's the time that actually that's the all according to my friend, no, uh, yung, yung medical expert, that's already the red flag of depression. That I am no longer, uh, I am no longer productive. 
that I, I, I told my friend, uh, no, I am still thinking about my work. I am still thinking about my, my the music, the dance, and all. I'm, I am still studying it. But my my outputs are my outputs does not even have this type of quality that I am looking for. According to her, Dex, you're already on the level of depression. You're already on the parang the parang I'm just facing the door of depression, according to her. And by the time that I I I I realized that no, okay, I will I will stop eating again. I stopped eating for quite siguro three three weeks. Stop eating like binge eating, ha? I'm still mm. eating, but not the the you know the heavy eater. Then when also when Chef Grace and other you know the program heads and the directors of our school, they visited me here inside the dormitory. They, they they are all, they are also shocked that I am very very fat. Like, so what happened to your body? You're very fat. Na malaki masadyo yung chan ko. My tummy is you know um very it's quite you know chunky. And, and it's also like a strain on the legs, um especially because you literally just strap on a few kilos. Yes. Um, yeah, I remember. And, yes, I remember yes, sir. like when it was still that time you you said like it, it felt so lethargic like that was one of the main complaints you told us uh when we were still in first year um and the, the lethargicness and the additional burden that i experienced during those days is when how can i teach physical education to my students with this kind of platform with this kind of approach <laughs> online knowing that i am not Diba? During our face-to-face, I am not bringing laptops. I am not presenting PowerPoint presentations. You, you, br- you bring a notebook, an eraser, and a marker. That's all you usually bring. Because I, I usually memorize everything before I will, enter the, I will enter the room. Or I will just bring the materials for our demonstrations right away. No, like okay, you you demonstrate this one. After I demonstrate, you demonstrate that one. Okay, all you all you need to do all you need to do is just to follow my my instructions. Then that's it. Demonstrations because the, the nature of our the nature of my course and the nature of my profession is more on demonstration. That's the number one problem that I am facing during those days. Like I I don't. That's why I asked Dr. Galindo, my coordinator, Janet coordinator. I asked her that I don't want to teach PE anymore. I I am I, I am very vocal with that. I don't like to teach P anymore because I don't have all the I don't have all the resources. I don't have the energy already to to teach. But since I am on the verge of survival mode, there's a need for me to push through it, whether you like it whether I like it or I like it the most. And I'll just talk and talk and talk. Knowing also the fact that I cannot do some recordings and do some demonstrations in front of in front of the camera and use it for as part of my instructions but it's just i'm presenting myself in front of the class and re- in front of the class and receiving a lot of bashes because my my figure is no longer pe related na you know my my, you know, my physical state is no longer like that oh my god p teacher tapos tambo so <laughs> no it's a natural actually it's a natural it's a dilemma in PE. If you are a chubby person or if you are if you are fat and then you are a PE teacher, then watch out for the bash. Yes, I already accepted that one. And for okay, it's under it, it really it really adds up to my problem up okay. here. I will no longer teach PE. Sabi ni Dr. Galindo, no, because you are a PE teacher. I will just add art appreciation. That's the time that art appreciation was introduced to me. Because originally, art appreciation, Dr. Galindo is the one who holds that course. But by the time that she knew na I am also working with institutions, groups and organizations, that I'm teaching as well culture and arts, 
Okay, Dex, ikaw na bahala nito. Okay, that's the, that's the only course that I really admire the most aside from NSTP. Because I'm just talking and talking, right? Not just in, not like in PE that I am demonstrating, but the fact that we are online, I cannot do some demonstrations. I just base it on, base it on YouTube. And knowing also that the performances or the, the references that can be found in YouTube is not doable for some reasons. Because first, there are students who are not kinesthetically good. Two, there are students who have pre-medical conditions. Three, there are students who are... Three, there are students who are PWTs. How can I supervise these people? How can no, you make them not... safe? Like that's that's also another key yes. part as to why a PE teacher is so important. Yes. It keeps the students safe. Like that's yes. something that's something people don't appreciate about PE teachers in general is that you are there to keep the students safe. Like you yes. would remind us constantly. Uh, make sure you're not snagging on your uh, jogging pants. Make sure you're not you're wearing something that's breathable, because these things are very dangerous if you're not paying attention. Yes, and we are not just promoting health. We are we are also promoting practical safety precautions because the yeah the nature of our course course is more on demonstrations. And usually, if you are demonstrating something, you are into a greater risk whether it's a simple kinesthetics or a complex kinesthetics. Now, you know, my, my, my frustration is when the time that I receive a lot of complaints coming from the parents that the student was already inside the hospital because of PE. Oh, dear. I have also a student recently that the, she was bitten by, a, I don't know if it's a stray dog or what, because of demonstrations in PE. So you see, instead of promoting, instead of providing them safety precautions, I can no longer supervise them. It's just more on top already. I am no longer, at, you know, it, it, for us kasi PE teachers, it should be like this. You are demonstrating there and we are watching beside you. Just to see, just to ensure that the students are you know, safe. And I, that's the that's the reason why I have a lot of problems. And during those days, uh, I do have this type of problem. Na if I don't if I don't like if I don't like to conduct class, I will not take a class. I will just automatically cancel. The like class. you start having mood swings. In a way, I have anger management issues right now mm. because it was started during the time of isolations, and I am very aware of it. Like mood swing is one, you no? Know? Like I, it's easy for me to get irritated. Ano ba to? I, you know, my reaction. Ano ba yan? You know, a simple gesture of a simple wrong gesture to my eye. Ano na agad? Yung, my anger already, my anger management is already at the top of its issues. Like God. Like that. That's also fueled by anxiety. Like people don't yes. understand. Like when you have aggression and and uh, and anger, your your anxiety fuels the fire. Like yes. even if you don't realize it, it will fuel the fire and it'll push you very far, very fast. Yeah. Towards uh, like a mental state of non-control and that's really really scary for both you and the people around you um especially like especially when it comes to the burden given to teachers when it comes to the treatment of students like you may think that stu like teachers can be really harsh and all that those who are watching this right now and but and another thing i'll see you continue but um i'll just add this is like if you read the Magna Carta for public school teachers, there's a lot of restrictions put on. And um, even though we are in a private institution, that still follows through um, to our rules. Like, it's not uncommon for a teacher to have one um, outbreak or whiplash and then no more license that they worked five years on. Go on, Sir Dex. 
the, uh, the additional burden during those days is, di ba, we are already online. We're yes. already online. And then, I thought that online work is, you know, being uh, having this kind of platform, having this kind of approach, will be more on flexibility. Uh, what I mean is, you have a flexible time for you to finish everything. But unfortunately, I receive a lot of emails. I will not. I will not mention who among these individuals sent emails. 2 a.m. 3 a.m. Oh dear. So it added it added to my ano uh, added to my burden. Like, like I, hello, we are already asleep. Why is it that my phone is ano alarming? Like I receive a lot of notifications that this individual already go. Good evening, sir Dex. Good evening, sir Dex. I, I don't think it counts as evening when it's 3 a.m. <laughs> No, there's no good in evening. <laughs> I already receive emails like that. Yeah, I, I admit that sometimes I'm sending emails around 2 a.m., 3 a.m. since I'm a, since I'm a nocturnal person. But I am I am also practicing this uh work life balance. Na our my 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 class will start at seven or eight. All emails should be sent during those uh, during this hour at this hour. But there are individuals talaga who will send emails tapos asap. Uy. Sir Dex, urgent Sir Dex, midnight. Yeah. There, there, are, there are urgent <laughs> reports that I need to send, and I will not mention the name, but uh, it's part of the admin that. Um, I receive uh, report. Uh, I receive requests. I receive this kind of of tasks so it should be done, and it should be submitted 8 a.m. on the following day. Like it I is the following day. Yeah, it is the following day. I asked. Uh, I asked someone. I I, I also uh, face face in the uh, uh, mirror and asked myself. I thought I'm already done with the BPO industry. That why why is it that I'm taking requests like this in the middle of the night? You know, um, that's the time that I I send. This is members of the admin, ha, huh? and I'm not afraid during those times. Like you're I, very I, outspoken. Um, I, I I'm already vocal, you know, you know already. What's we, my yeah, character? we know you're one of the most vocal members of the management committee of the school. We we. Uh, we've come. We've actually gotten used to that uh, because I'm <laughs> because uh, uh, for context, uh, everyone. I am part of the student council um, uh, for both times that I was in the school, both in the year one and year three. I w- I'm I'm still in the student council, though there is another election upcoming, and so I can finally take a break after that. But yeah, yeah. we've we know that Sir Dex. We know that Sir Dexter has a history of. Uh, of being vocal but but what we've come to understand from our perspective sir dex is that you're you're not vocal without a good reason yeah of course and that's why and that's why like that's why we hear you out even though a lot of the new officers are like eh, like no done <laughs> by by the sudden like vocality but it's for us we're used to it primarily because somebody has to say what somebody needs to say Yes, and I, I I really love myself of, of being a very vocal person, no? but sometimes I, I find it toxic. Ano ba ni, uy, ano ba to? Why is it that I am entering the, or why is it I am engaging myself to this kind of discourse, knowing that I am not also part of this kind of organization, or, di ba? There are times that I'm like that, but yeah, there's a need for me to, to parang, there are, there's a need for me to talk. Because you know that my, I will not mention that <laughs> during the that everything was tested during the foundation week, right? Yes. Na, it's just out of the blue. I entered the premises of the ano, I entered the premises of the the council and and throw words throw words against you and the, the, the entire team and give resolutions right away in order for us to come up with this kind of program, the period. 
And yeah, let's go back to ano, let's go back. Yeah. I, I so, sent a message. So, I sent a message. Oh, yeah, so it's Google. So yeah, the thing about it is that um, you both, on all sides, on all sides in college, there are expectations. Okay, this is this is a golden piece of advice to anyone who's uh, listening. There is a lot of expectations in college, faculty, student, student officers. Okay, and there will be fire in the kitchen. There yes. will be fire in the kitchen. A huge um, fire in the kitchen. A huge fire in the kitchen, and that's regardless of how well you plan. A lot of people often say like, "Oh, it's often because of your planning," but then. There are things like a pandemic that you don't, you know, prepare ahead of time. You can't prepare ahead of time. There are things like an earthquake that compromises the school for an entire day. We, you know, we're sick of that. Um, hashtag uh, Miss LPU, Mr. and Miss LPU Davao. <laughs> like the amount of times we had to go like, oh, are we evacuating? No, no, we're not evacuating. Um, but yeah, like, Like they like uh, to lead back into what you were talking to earlier, Sir Dexter, is that when we start when we went online, um, work didn't stay at work anymore. Work was now part of everything, and that was part of what made it so unhealthy. Yes, because we need to engage with work in order for us to survive. Because not it's not just me, no. Uh, who's already a professional, a young professional, but it's every, it's for everyone who's working. And I am very fortunate that time. Actually, I, I was crying every night during those days because I am crying because I'm already exhausted. But I'm also crying because I am all, I am very happy and blessed because I still have a work. Because there's a lot of individuals during those days that they were replenished or they were removed out of the company because the company can no longer provide even a single salary because of the the effects after effects of the pandemic and we are not allowed to go outside and do some work since majority of our majority in the economy right now or in the majority of the the jobs here in The society is more on skill-based, so it's a service industry. I am very lucky during those days. I, I usually cry most of the time, and um, that's that. Uh, that's also the time that it changed. Really, it changed my my. I know my 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 Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I need to survive. I don't care if the students will comment negative stuff against me for as long as I will receive a money for me to eat, eat and eat. That's the, that's the first, that's that, that's really my, I know, that's really my That's a literal story. description of hitting rock bottom. Yes. That is a literal description. That's already the practical, that's already the, ano eh, that's already the verge of having that kind of situation. Wherein, you don't have any options na you need to think of a particular ano na, particular solution for you to survive. And whether you have this kind of output or not, you need to work. And let's go back to the, the emails I received. No, that's very draining. I, 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 chat that, I chatted that person. I chatted that person. I emailed that person. And I also remind that person, do not send an email 8.00. 5 p.m. onwards because I am paid from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. period. So I am also on the that's the after effects of ano. I would like to add there. I would like to add there because a lot of people think that such a sentiment would be mean, but um, you have to understand the context in that there's no longer a a separation of venue between work and home. Yes. Like that 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 used to be the saving grace for a lot of hardworking people in that all my problems are over there in the office or in the faculty room or in the classroom. All my problems are there. But when you start encroaching onto um, more like intimate spaces like your own home, like why is the problem getting to my screen? Um, especially yes. if it's in your bedroom or you only have a bedroom, it gets pretty bad. And 
I know there will be some objectivists that say like, oh, but it's, you know, still separate. You have to understand holistically how your brain works in that it works in spaces. And if your if your resting space is being invaded, um, you won't you'll be having a hard time taking like taking proper sleep. Uh, yeah. This is also a reason why uh, if you're having trouble sleeping, put your phone somewhere out of reach. Like that is a legitimate recommendation uh, backed up by a lot of literature that you should get the source of your anxiety away from arm's reach if you're trying to get some sleep. Um, like, thank you so much, Sir Dexter, for spending like two hours with me on this conversation. I'd just like to wrap up with, um, with one last question on this in that, um, uh, what would you say to your younger self if you could still meet them? To, you, to the younger self that was still going through the third year in college, arguably the worst years of people's lives, what would you say to them? Simple. Enjoy life being a student. Because right after the academic stress, there's a bigger problem lies ahead. It's not that it's not just how you survive, but it is how you compose yourself in front of other people because you are no longer a simple a simple type person. You are already a professional that deals with different personalities, different faces, different cultures, and different backgrounds of life. You are handling this type of people, so you really need to compose yourself. And maybe I, if, if, I, if I can... If I, will, if I will be given the chance to go to another universe, to multiverse, <laughs> and meet my younger self, no, I will really tap. I will really tap the shoulder. I will really tap the, the tap the shoulder of my younger self. You are doing great. Whether you have a lot of failures in life, failure is just a lot of a lot of individuals says failure is not an option. But there's a lot of there's a lot of lessons in failure. And failure will be your good foundation to become a composed individual, whether you like it or you like it the most. And uh, as what I've mentioned no, during the, the entire hours of talking here in front of you, Clays, time management, very cliche, but yeah, time management according to its priorities, values, practices, and your recreation, you need to have a smooth definition or a smooth marks of limitations of your work-life balance or academic life, personal life, and your other life. No? Next is you join clubs and organizations while you are still young because these people will not just hone you your, your professional life. It will also hone your character and your um, skills, not just in inclinations, but communication skills. That is very important if you are a young professional. Communication skills is very important because you are dealing with different characters and people. Next is you need to have a good support system for you to have an established, um, established options on how to handle certain scenarios because that is a very good source of that is a good source of you know motivation on how to handle serious types of illnesses whether it's mental illnesses whether it's burnout whether burnout anxiety and depression well, well in depression you really need to look for a medical expert wherein you need to con you need to engage to different therapy, and I would like also to remind the viewers, you no. Know, I know that the, being on at, on the denial stage is normal, but accepting and you and you must be aware of what is happening to your system is a good opportunity or a good 
a good step for recovery. No? Acceptance and being aware of what's inside you will be a good source, good step for recovery. I've learned a lot during, I've learned that during the Being Skills program when I took the course. Because Being Skills is, ano, it's not just I know it's an OA DAO. It's an OA <laughs> it, program. But it's not OA. It's just the approach is OA. According to other students. The approach is OA, but it will help you to become you. Right? So, yun, uh, there are a lot of key points that we are talking about. no. And I hope that the listeners will not just listen. You will also, you need also to point some points wherein you need to become more empirical of choosing these points and apply it to your own life and do we are uh, and do not copy the process of other people because we don't have the same coping mechanism and pacing again coping mechanism and pacing should be twins should be jived with each other because uh, this will help you become more um, this will this will help you to reach to that kind of point na I am already recovering because of the acceptance pacing and coping mechanism you are already on the track of having a very fruitful and at least you are on the ano na, you are very productive question my mm. question to myself right now am i already away from the ano pitfall of burnout yes because of the therapy that i am in right now and thanks to my friends no i i am not afraid i am not afraid of admitting myself to them because there's a need. There's a really need for me to listen to their advices. And medical advice is very, very important. I know that there are, we have friends who are there who will listen to them, who will uh, listen to our problems. That's the support system. But their insights or inputs sometimes put us to danger. Might as well go to the exact person where they will give you a logical sequence of therapy for you to survive at least. Another is don't hesitate to call the, ano, don't hesitate to call um, mental health assistance here in we have actually I, I forgot to save the numbers it, it, that's that, that that's the ano program of spmc right now the, the, it's free it's I, free. I think doh also has support. a mental health line um yeah that's one uh, that's yeah. the one that i'm referring to uh, doh yes. slash SPMC. i will put that in the description um note for future klismer put that in the description and okay. secondly if you are a student of lyceum of the philippines davao uh, I will also put in the description the contact details for our counseling center because, yes. well, uh, well, students, fellow students, you paid for it. You might yeah. as well use it. Um, so, again, really, really deep thank you for your time, Sir Dexter. Um, it's my honor. Like, I, I went into this and I invited you knowing that we would have a conversation that would be worthwhile, but I did not expect having like two hours of actual <laughs> legitimate thinking because because um, here's the reality about things is we need more conversations like this to be accessible to people. Of course, you can't be in front of everyone all the time. Um, like that's really one of the biggest uh, dilemmas of teachers nowadays is you don't you don't you're not able to spend that more face-to-face -face time outside the classroom with your students. I know you've gotten to know all of us very well. And, and I would just like to say again, really deep thank you. And I'm sure a lot of people who will watch this uh, and who will sit through it and listen and be part of the conversation 
um, will gain a lot of it. Um, so again, thank you and good evening, Sir Dexter. Hi. Thank you so much also, please. I mean, it's an honor to, to talk to you. Uh, I know that uh, it's very lengthy. I shared a lot of things, but I hope that the listeners will at least get at least two points no, of our talk, our conversation, and they will apply it on themselves. And uh, I would like also to remind everyone, the, 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 few, the, the watchers, no, the, the viewers rather, to uh, especially Lycians, um, utilize our facilities because we have guidance and counseling. Don't hesitate to, ano, don't hesitate to become anonymous course in fight, order the, for stigma. You, fight yeah, the stigma fight that, the stigma that uh, fight the stigma that because you're going to guidance counseling you're crazy fight that stigma no you're not crazy <laughs> it's just it's just you need it's it's just you need someone you need help you. and you yeah. need professional help if when you can access it so again really wonderful time and this is us um this is me and sir dexter signing off uh in this conversation wish everyone who's watching this all the best bye